Welcome back to the Soul Dojo. Once again, a full panel. My name is Curtis. Hey. I am a uh, video games news writer. I am also joined by the rest of the dojo staff, which is Nile Levwards and everybody's favorite Bay Area rapper, Walter Slapadelic. Oh, hey, that's me. <laughs> It's How? us, the three Sony ponies here, ready to yeah, talk about. Yeah, the three Sony ponies, the fanboys. Oh, yeah. Oh man, we're st we're taking shots immediately. <laughs> <laughs> we're going in. Um, hey, let, let's start off. So we're we're gonna talk about the Xbox Developer Direct that happened on Thursday. We finally got we were able to come together and be able to talk about this. Voltaire, I want to start with you because I think your your opinions usually are harsher than me and uh, <laughs> Niles, which is fine. That this is what the yeah. dojo is about. It's about opinions. Now, mm -hmm. I I think this is going to be kind of me giving a little bit of my opinion and giving you a bit of a question. So, I think this was really good from uh, from Xbox for what we saw. There's a lot of games that have been given release dates of this year. So now you're getting, yes. uh, in here you're getting four games, Xbox exclusives coming out this mm -hmm. year. How do you feel about this Direct in particular? Yeah, I, I, it's funny that you said, I came in here kind of skeptical at first because it, it came out like the, the like production and the, the, all the different camera angles of the people walking down hallways and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, they're all they all look nice and they're dressed nice. Yeah, and it's like I'm happy for them. They look like they're being paid and everything. But it's like I just I just want to see the gameplay. You know what I mean? It's like it felt like a like a commercial for working at Microsoft for a couple of minutes. But then but then it won me over because it got it get into the gameplay and the games that they showed do you know, it's nice to see that they're like really coming out with games this year <laughs> yeah i i really liked this direct i think it was like a really um cool way of doing it just being like what was there was like five six games that they showed and it was like still the length of the kind of thing you see in the stony state of play on nintendo directs the difference is that is like 80 percent like stuff no one cares about whereas this mm -hmm. it felt like okay let's focus on like big titles give them mm -hmm. the time of day and i found it really engaging to watch and i i went into it expecting to be bored because i've never seen one of these xbox directs before so the first game uh, i don't know i i can't remember the exact um uh list and the exact order that they went so we're just going to start off with a vow that voltaire mm -hmm. mentioned there um i trust obsidian a lot to make a really good game uh me and voltaire yeah. are fans of the outer worlds of course and then, Great and then game. they also did like the the Fallout New series, Vegas. right, the, the mm -hmm. Fallout series. So they're really good with, like, world building. They're good with dialogue options and uh, gameplay, of course. Um, Walter, what did you like about seeing that you saw from Avowed? I, um, I sort of – I remember hearing about it a while ago, and I kind of forgot about it. And I was seeing the footage of it, and I was like, this looks nice. This looks like kind of like a fresh take on a sort of Skyrim kind of game. And then it was like – I'm like – it clicked, and I was like, oh, shit, yeah, that's right. That's Obsidian. That's Outer Worlds, mm -hmm. people. That's like – so you know, like uh, I I I saw some people in the comments as being kind of skeptical about some of the animations and stuff like that, and I don't know. I I feel like it looks fun. It looks like an Obsidian fantasy game, and that excites me. Mm. You know, that's the the one I was looking forward. That's the one I wanted to see. You know, um, that's that's the one that introduced me the most about it. I guess. So the combat yeah. is going to be yeah. big time variety. Like you're going to be able to have mm -hmm. like a wand and a shield. What I really liked, I liked the combination of the shield and the, and a gun. I thought that was kind of mm -hmm. cool, but they're going to, that was great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're yes. going to be able to uh, uh, go between different types of loadouts and things like that. That's mm -hmm. what I, that's what really impressed me. Um, yeah. They said the dual wielding, the, um, the magic wands. Yeah. And I thought that was kind of cool. You know what I mean? Like, and, oh, like an uh, FPS kind of one. Yeah. Wielding and the idea guy. of like wizards dueling. And then yeah. one of them is just like, ah, oh, screw this. Just bam. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's hilarious to me. I love that. Uh, now, what do you think about Avowed so far? Yeah, I'm, like you said, I'm a big, I'm also a big fan of the Outer Worlds, and I've played Fallout New Vegas really like that. I feel like I'm getting a bit drained on that format of game, especially with, you know, yeah. that very, it's very Bethesda style, and because that's their origins, and I, I, I feel drained on that a little bit, but this looked engaging enough and also open enough, especially mm -hmm. with what they were showing off with the side quests and how you can really approach it your own way. It gave me kind of Breath of the Wild vibes, but like the next level of that almost, mm -hmm. where it's fully your own judgment, it seems like, with a lot of these character-based decisions you can make. That I think that looks like the most engaging and interesting part to me. 
which I found about the Outer Worlds is the story and the dialogue options and stuff like that was way more interesting than any of the mm -hmm. combat. And yeah. I feel like with Obsidian in general, that kind of tends to be the direction that their game's going for me. But that being said, all the kind of fantasy battle stuff looked pretty cool in this. And I'm not a fantasy mm -hmm. guy. I don't really like fantasy stuff in general. But this could be like the kind of fantasy thing that gets me in. And I'm I'm definitely going to play this, which mm -hmm. is a big thing for me to say about a fantasy thing. I do. I should say that I'm... Um, I did kind of agree with some of the criticism people were saying. Um, not 100% sold on Avowed, but I'm willing to yeah. see more of it. And I want to see more of it because I'm still a little confused. And I do on think that, on. you know, it is still a few months out. You know what I mean? And so, you know, we're probably seeing something that still has a few months of work to do on it and everything. I, I do remember thinking that in the trailer, but I was more taken by, you know, they're really making a swing at it. And it looks like they're going to put, you know, all of their city magic into it, plus more of a focus, like you said, on combat than they've done. It was uh, Visions of Mana which is part of the Final right. Fantasy Adventure series. This game isn't an exclusive, but I think Xbox brought this game in to be like, hey, like we're still really good fans and, and really good friends with the people at Square Enix and that type of game, which is that Japanese RPG. Uh, they brought it in. It actually looks really fun. It reminds me a lot of, uh, what's the game that's on Switch? It kind of reminds Xenoblade. me a little okay. bit of Xenoblade. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it reminds me of that. And uh, this this looks a little interesting. I think I'm gonna go ahead and play it. I don't know what you guys have to say about it, Voltaire. Uh, it definitely has. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going through puberty there. It definitely has um, like Nino Kuni sort of vibes, like Dragon Quest and stuff. Uh, it definitely looks interesting. Definitely one of those games that I'll you know looks like something I would at least kind of jump around in and try out with. You know what I mean? Um, I I really I swear for like the half the half of that trailer, I thought Xbox had bought Square Enix. <laughs> Oh, I was like, oh, man. no. It sounds like, oh, no. Yeah. That would have been that would have been crazy. That would have been crazy. Like, yeah. uh, yeah, like, I mean, I like the combat. Um, It is coming out se se uh, it's September. No, it comes out in the summer of 2024. I won't be playing much. So I think this is a mm -hmm. good summer game. Um, I don't know if you're into these kind of games, Niall. I was going to ask, have you all played these divisions of the Monic uh, games in the past? I played, I think it was Trials of Mana, uh, and by played it, I mean gave it about 30 minutes and went, oh, okay, because it's not, it's not my sort of, my, my as uh, my fellow Brits say, cup of tea, but um, <laughs> it's, I, I can respect it, and I saw this trailer and I was like, okay, that looks like a good game, mm. one that I probably won't play, but I'm glad that this thing that looks quality is out there for the people who want this kind of thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm a real cool guy like that. Yeah. I played uh, yeah. <laughs> games like Dragon Quest Builders. Real man of the people. Uh, I played Dragon Quest Builders. I like the Dragon Quest Builders. I played the regular Dragon Quest. And I've also played mm -hmm. Xenoblade. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is definitely yeah. a game I can get down with. And yeah. I, I can't wait to try it when it comes out um, this summer. Um, the next game was uh, that we'll talk about is the Aura History Untold. I don't know if you guys have played games like Age of Empires, right. um, yes. Civilization, things like this, but this looks very interesting to see. Like, mm -hmm. you, what the developers were talking about was like you'll be able to see your decisions like in real time, and it'll really affect your gameplay. Walter, I don't know if you've dabbled in this type of uh, strategy games before. Uh, when I was a kid, I was real into um, yeah, Command and Conquer and Age of Empires and stuff. I'm just not. I'm just not as good at them as an adult. I don't know what it is, to be frank. Maybe I don't have the patience or something. Um, uh, my wife is very much into those types of games and is interested in this one. Um, uh, uh, but um, yeah, I don't. I don't. It's. It looks very interesting. It looks like they're trying to be do something a little new with it. I just don't know enough about that kind of type of game these days to really say if it's something that I would like be excited to play or not. I don't know if you've played any of these types of games, Niall. Um, I've always avoided them because I know if I touch them at all, it'll ruin my life because I'll become completely so like, obsessed with it and it'll become everything. So it's, it's the same with like, I, I can't even think of another example of it, but if I, if I, <laughs> I have the same with Skyrim of like, I can't play this game because I'll, I'll live in it and it will kill me. But then I was watching this show and I was like, I really want to play it. I really want to play this. <laughs> this looks so interesting and just 
a, a slightly fresh enough take on a long, long, long running style of game. Yeah. I think genuinely just seeing how passionate the people that were making it were about it made me go, like, oh, yeah, awesome. Mm-hmm. I want to I wanna be in that. Like, I want to be involved. And so I will play this game and it will kill me. So <laughs> yeah. I guess look forward to that. <laughs> uh, and this game, I think what's really cool about it, another Xbox exclusive will be on PC, of course, and, and, and Xbox, and it'll definitely come to Game Pass. I think this is something that's really – this type of game is cool because there's nothing that PlayStation has in its lineup that's like this, which, hmm. is, which is really yeah. – I think it's a good idea that Xbox is going forward with something like this. The next game, Hellblade 2. This was the big one that I really wanted to see. I really wanted to see Hellblade 2, or it's officially called Senua Saga Hellblade 2. Yeah. Um, Voltaire. That's what everyone was looking forward to, everyone was talking about. Uh, definitely. You know? uh, right next yeah. to the last game we'll talk about. What do you what do you think so about excited, from so from what this. you've seen of Hellblade Two? What what have you seen? It looks great. You know, I need to go play the first one. It's just one of those games I never really got around to like playing. I put like I played for like an hour on my like laptop like back when the very first mm-hmm. got Game Pass, but I never really gave it like a fair shake. You know, um, just didn't work out that way. You know, um, but uh, it looks really good. The, the acting, the animation, super impressive. Um, it, the the little bit that I do remember of the first one, it'll be fascinating to see how they change up. They said they're doing something brand new with the combat. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, you know, it's a very... Um, they, those games are like technical marvels, so I'm just fascinated anytime there's like an update about it, you know? Uh, I I have the first Hellblade installed on my Xbox. I plan on trying to finish it by the time <laughs> the new one comes out, so we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> At least you'll... Definitely, it is... Look, I've I've raved about this game since the first one came out. I absolutely love the first game, Hellblade: mm-hmm. Sinua's Sacrifice. It was an amazing game. It really tested me as a gamer. It opened me to the fact that games aren't just something you sit down and play. It is a whole experience, and that first mm-hmm. game is phenomenal. This one, uh, when they were talking about it, when Ninja Theory were going through what uh new technology they got it just screamed of xbox money it, it, they got like a new yeah. mo cash yeah. like mo <laughs> what was it mo capture tech they got a new audio mm-hmm. tech going on and that's really what immerses you into the game so xbox just threw the money at it weirdly enough the game is going to be around the same amount of time as the uh as the first game so it's going to be if you know exactly what you're doing you're going to go through it in like seven hours uh, it's going to be 50 dollars. i really thought it would have went into like a 30 hour game but it seems like Hmm. they're going to keep that the small they're going to focus more on the quality of the game and not give you quantity of it so it's going to be just a a small condensed experience now what do you think about hellblade 2 do you know my thoughts on the first hellblade game if i I can't remember yeah i actually (laughs) cannot remember it's it's one of the worst things i've ever played i despise that game i really (laughs) And I want to do a video on it at some point. I, when you were just talking about that, I was like, I disagree with everything you said. I think it Hilarious. is. Uh, I, I love the idea of games, and some of my favorite games are that type of game where you can sit down and not just be playing something, be dragged into like a, a real deep narrative experience. It's why I love film and stuff like that. I felt like that first Hellblade was a just completely vapid and empty attempt and pretentious attempt at trying to do that. It oh i really annoyed and i like forced myself to finish it because everyone was like oh this game's amazing this game's amazing i was like okay i'm I'm waiting for it to get good and then the credits wrong what did i do it's i I don't know and i feel insane that that everyone loves it and i don't know what people but uh, this looks pretty nice like graphically it looks pretty cool Mm -hmm. i was really interested in what they were talking about with the spatial audio uh which is very Mm -hmm. similar to dolby atmos and that's something that i absolutely love i'm a big sound guy and just getting a look at how they're really focusing on spatial audio, which is quite a new technology, in order to really bring you into an immersive experience, I think is super fascinating. And I love that there's a studio really paying attention to that. I wish they were doing it in any other game. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what the Soul Dojo is about. That's Two hilarious. different <laughs> opinions. Like, uh, last game we're going to talk about and is uh, Indiana Jones in the Great Circle. Mm-hmm. Uh, this game is by the people that did the Wolfenstein games. Um, it's first person. A lot of people are not really hyped about the fact that it's first person, but it, I think it's kind of cool. It has like 
first person whip action. It's like a FPS whip game. He's just yeah, it's interesting. Handling out yeah. some stuff. I um, can't wait to see Donkey's video. <laughs> yeah, it's about the whip. Uh, I, I like the beginning scene that they showed. It just it gave me like a, it gave me like a mm-hmm. um uh uh. Like a Sean Connery uh, 007 vibe, but it, of course it's Indiana Jones. It's like the the Nazi evil guy mm-hmm. talking to him and giving him this monologue, and it was just it was really good. It gave me a lot of movie yeah. beats. Um, mm-hmm. What do you think about this game, Balto Slapadelic? Um, so I'm not I've never been a big fan of the movies. You know, like I just I don't really have a strong opinion of them uh, on, on either way. I think that they're you know they're all right. I guess mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> Um, and I think that um, it's hard to. I, is that really um, Harrison Ford doing the voice acting? No, no, it's I'm not sure that it is, is right? Uh, is it not? It's Batman, isn't it's, it? Uh, either it's, that or is it Nate, the guy who plays Nathan Drake? Oh, oh wait, maybe no, it is. That's right. Okay. You're right there. I got it yeah. here somewhere. Okay. Because it, it, it was a little uncanny valley for me to it. hear the voice because I was like, is that. That's like an impression of. <laughs> <laughs> of Harrison Ford, isn't it? Um, but I will say, um, and yeah, I, and I, the 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 first person whipping is an interesting design choice that I'm really fascinated to see how that how that turns out. Um, but all that being said, I have a lot of confidence in this game because of machine games because their Wolfenstein Two is one of my favorite games I've ever played. It's so fun. There, it's. It's all about, you know, beating the crap out of Nazis, which is something that Indiana Jones is is known for doing, and so I think it's really right in their in their wheelhouse. You know, it's a game about beating up Nazis and going on, you know, wild adventures. I, I, I'm a huge Indiana Jones head. Uh, this looks great in like anytime we see gameplay or an environment. I thought the character models looked oh, hideous. I thought they were like the yeah. PS3 level. Like there was some real uncanny valley stuff in there. But as a whole, I'm really excited to play this. I do wish it was mm-hmm. third person because I tend to I tend to choose third person stuff in general. <laughs> in general, but um, I got real distracted because I hit my keyboard, <laughs> and so that's why my sentence <laughs> around so quickly. But um, yeah, I, I'm excited to play it. I wish it wasn't um first person, but it seems like they're taking a cool approach with it. It mm-hmm. seems like they really want it to be like a you're not playing as Indiana Jones, you are Indiana Jones, like mm-hmm. they said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if that's if that's the trade off to make a an immersive Indiana Jones experience that's hopefully better than the last like two or three movies at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then, yeah, I'm I'm game for that. Yeah. It, but I do see what you're saying about the some of the facial animations though. That opening cut scene was nice, but there were some few shots where I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it does have a release window of sometime this year. Um, yeah, I think when it comes to this particular game, I am kind of surprised it isn't third person. So I agree with you, Niall. Um, I think it's I think it's really weird because you do want to see. I was surprised about that. Uh, too. Indiana Jones in that in the environments, uh, interacting mm-hmm. with things. You do want to see that. So I can understand a lot of people that's getting frustrated with just the over incompetence of the um or uh, over usage of the first person because we have multiple first person uh games from Xbox. How do you guys feel about Xbox? this developer direct and just overall do you feel like these exclusives because now we're starting to see the exclusives now you know they Mm -hmm. they said we bought this we bought these developers we bought these developers we bought this company now it's been a few years after that and now they're starting to finally bring out the product Mm -hmm. um do you think xbox is finally making that shift that maybe they're starting to go tit for tat with playstation on exclusives um so how do we overall like just feel about xbox voltaire um, yeah, I mean, you know, despite what some people might say in the comments of various videos, I actually am a, a fan of Xbox, you know, um, and, you know, I, I like Game Pass a lot, you know, we always say it's hard to talk about it without sounding like we're sponsored or whatever, yeah, you know, exactly. uh, you know, and, but it's just like you said, there hasn't been a lot of exclusives, so it's, there's like times when Xbox sounds like, yeah, we're going to go all in and we're going to get all these exclusives. We're really going to do it. You know, we don't, we're not even worried about Sony anymore. We're just doing all of these exclusives and everything. And then there's other times where they kind of act like, oh, we'll never be on the level of Sony with their exclusives. And we don't even really try anymore. You know, we're like, he said something like that the other day. Like, mm-hmm. we're, we're, Xbox is never going to be competitive. Mm-hmm. It's like, 
You're the only other choice. What are you talking about? <laughs> and, and that is 100% true because sometimes, and that's my big critique on Phil Spencer, is sometimes he, founds, he sounds very defeatist. Sometimes. Yeah. And I'm like, I dude. He's real defeatist. I get a, I get a vibe from him that he's he's not doing well. I feel bad for the guy. <laughs> Every now and then he'll come up with like a, a statement that he's like, "Yeah, we're not very good, are we?" Yeah. Like, oh, man, are you, what, what's wrong? Yeah. He's like, I hate Xbox. <laughs> I just don't like Xbox. Yeah. Uh, uh, Niall, what's your opinion on it? Uh, before I say my opinion, I want to get ahead of the comments and say that I don't think either of you two know this, but I am actually sponsored by Sony. They reached out to me a, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> And um, I am I am paid off by them, so keep that in mind with everything that I say. <laughs> nice. But um, nice. Uh, no, I I think you've nailed it. That like uh, Xbox and uh, Microsoft, they they're doing something different. I think they they fell so far behind in the battle between the Xbox One and the PS4 that they knew they weren't going to keep that consumer base, which was extra mm -hmm. important in in the shift from most gamers being physical media people to digital media people and having those purchases carry over that was a huge generation for them to have lost and i think they've really come to an understanding now of what that's done to them as a company and you see them place mm -hmm. so much more emphasis on stuff like game pass and game streaming which isn't about owning games and having ownership over a digital library it's about instead creating not just like xbox isn't a console anymore it's an ecosystem and yeah. i think they care less now about shifting units and more about trying to make this ecosystem as appealing as it can to everyone and not try and dissuade mm -hmm. people from buying a PlayStation, but try and persuade them into having a PlayStation, yeah, if they do, but also going, yeah, but there's Xbox as well that you can use as a side thing. Yes. And stuff like Game Pass, you don't need a console. You don't even need a PC that can run the games. You can do game streaming. Mm -hmm. and so I think they're... I reckon within the next five, six years, we're going to see them make a real push and try to, and I don't know if it will happen, but I think they're going to try and get stuff like xCloud on the Nintendo Switch 2 and the PS5 or whatever. I, I would not be and surprised be, about that at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be, uh, become a hub rather than like mm -hmm. a, a console. Yeah, and I kind of think because, you know, there's like these two minds now of it's like, oh, we need to redo the console wars, you know, or like not even maybe not even that extreme, but like there's like Xbox needs to be competitive again, but then there's this sort of other reality forming of, the consoles kind of all fit their own niche, you know? The PlayStation is the, the big is... powerhouse that everyone has. Yeah. Xbox is for streaming. Like you said, it's a more of a platform. And Nintendo, you know, they make the Switch. <laughs> they make, <laughs> you know, they make the, becoming... the Game Boys. They make the yeah. Switch. They're becoming incredibly, incredibly like um, competitive in a space they're creating. I think mm -hmm. they're starting something brand new that very well may be the future of gaming the same way that blockbuster was killed by netflix mm -hmm. i feel like xbox are building that new style of yes. thing and they're the first in this new hub unless you can't like google stadia which what's wrong with you, you but it's that it's that kind of thing <laughs> yeah that is man is. That, that that i mean we could go down a whole rabbit hole and do a whole video of that um just man, that i'm so song. smart yeah <laughs> 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 uh, my name is my yeah. name is Curtis. You can follow me on on X, Twitter, whatever they call it, Elon Musk dot com. Xbox, at, Xbox Musk. Um, yeah. at, at Cali from the Dojo Voltaire. You can plug yourself in. Yep, uh, psychedelic music here on YouTube. Um, yeah, about to weather permitting, film a music video this week, and um, just Walter psychedelic on Instagram. I don't know. Look me up on Spotify. That's about it. Hey, now go ahead. Uh, you can find me at the local HMV slash Blockbuster video looking for my new movie <laughs> for the night. And that's all I've got. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> all right. Make sure you guys subscribe to this old Dojo Gaming channel. We're well on our way to 1,000 subscribers. Make sure you guys like the video and get in the comments. We always just joke, but we love seeing your guys' comments. Mm -hmm. We love that you guys get yeah. involved yeah. in the conversation. Make sure you guys mm -hmm. do that, and we'll be down there commenting with you guys. So yeah. we'll check you guys later, right? Tell us what kind of shows Peace. we are. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs>